So there are a number of different ways to propagate new grape vines, and usually when grape growers want to start new vines, they use dormant cuttings, which are taken in the fall or winter when the vine is dormant. And the problem with those is they can take uh, a couple of years to get established and rooted. And I have a pretty popular video on my channel about taking green cuttings, which are taken and rooted in the same season. So you can check out that video if you want to, but in this video, I'm gonna talk about layered cuttings. And if you have an established vineyard like this and you have some large vines with space around them or you have some gaps that you wanna fill in, you can use this method and get uh, new rooted cuttings in less than a season, so in a few months. And uh, that's what I'm gonna show you today and we're gonna start out earlier this season uh, when the grapes were still dormant and everything was not green like it is now. So you can see here, there's a couple of gaps, like I've got a good, healthy, vigorous vine there, a couple of gaps here, and then another couple of vigorous vines there. And this is Norton. Norton is a variety that does really well in organic uh, methods. Problem is, it's notoriously difficult to start from cuttings, and so I'm gonna use a method called layering that uh, means that I don't have to start new cuttings, and basically what you do is you take a vine from an established um, grapevine and you make it long enough that it can reach the gap um, and then you'll, I'll pin it down under the soil, uh, at least pin a couple of these nodes down under the soil because that's where the roots come from. It'll have the energy off the parent vine to take and it'll keep it healthy until it gets root, sy root systems established on its own. And then that vine starts growing on its own and you can just cut off the connection to the parent vine. So I'm going to fill in a couple of these gaps in here. So hopefully it's a way that I can get some of these Nortons established in here more quickly than I would if I was just trying to plant cuttings or buy cuttings and then fill in some of these gaps. on them or a few buds so that they can continue to produce some grapes. Okay. When I pin the end of the vine down onto the ground, I want to make a little cut about halfway through the cane, being sure to leave some vascular layers between the parent vine and what will be the new vine. The cut will block some flow of nutrients and water and signal to the new vine section that it should start making its own roots to make up for what it's not getting. Be careful not to cut too much of it or the new section won't be getting enough from the parent to survive. The cut section should be buried, but at least one or two nodes of the new vine section should be buried so that roots can form on them. Roots don't need to form on the parent side of the cut. Then I staple down the vine so it can't be so easily pulled out of the dirt. This will continue to grow and, and I'll get, you know, lots of leaves and shoots coming off of this, this part of the vine. So that's immediately going to just be feeding energy into this so that there's uh, still energy going through to our uh, new vine. So that's still got a good connection there. pretty much all there is to it. So this will be feeding energy into here and this uh, since it's still got connection to the parent vine it will still have have energy going in there and it will continue to grow.
We'll just leave these be for now and get back to pruning the rest of the vineyard. The real, very faint barking of one of those guard, guardian dogs. Very low bark. <laughs> there it goes, walking away. The guardian dogs are used by people here who keep livestock as a way to keep predators away from their animals. The dogs aren't house trained and spend all of their time outside in the pasture with the livestock. They're working animals. We have coyotes, foxes, minks, even bobcats in our area, and the guardian dogs will ensure that the goats, chickens, ducks, and hogs aren't messed with. All the grape prunings are piled up to be burned so that any disease on them won't be spread. The vines had begun to send out their new shoots. Even the layered cuttings were putting on new growth. section of the vine and this is the new section. So I'm just going to move some of this manure out of the way. I'm going to dig down and see you can see what's going on under here. So far, it doesn't look like it has. It's not formed any roots yet. So we're going to let it keep going. Pin it down and we're going to let it grow, go. By later in the season, it should have formed roots. Ooh. Got a couple of roots sprouting on here. So we'll just Put that right back in there. You don't want to mess with it. Disturb those roots. Looking at this layered cutting, we can see that the shoots on the new section are wilty and not vigorous at all. Likely this is because there's not enough water and nutrient flow from the parent plant, meaning we cut the vine too deeply and cut off its lifeblood. There's a new shoot close to the soil that might be getting more nutrients and water, so we won't dig this one up and we'll just wait until we see it get stronger. I'm intercropping irises with the grapes so that I can make use of the unused space between the rows of vines and have bulbs to sell online. The irises don't compete with the grapes as much as the grasses or cover crops that usually grow between the vines. I'll have the first bulbs available for sale on the Hardcore Sustainable website in August and September.
Now it's time to look at the root development in our cuttings one last time. I'll only dig up one to show the root growth, and this one I won't cut now because both being dug up and being separated from the parent vine would be too much of a shock to the new vine. You can see the abundant root production along this buried section of cane, and notice how the roots come from the nodes and not the spaces between. All of those roots all along here. Although I'm showing you how to cut off the vine from the parent cane for this video for the sake of expedience, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. Why? Because there's no reason not to keep the new vine connected to the parent. The only thing it can do is make it less likely for the new cutting to survive and thrive. The best time to cut the vine off from the parent is after the vine has gone dormant, or in the spring, just before the vine begins to leaf out. If you cut it off right now, it's possible that the new cutting will be shocked and given that it's the middle of the season when it gets very hot and dry, it's more likely to struggle if I cut it off. So do as I say in this part of the video, not as I do. But at least this gives you an idea of what cutting off the vine from the parent looks like. This third layered cutting is the one I cut a little too deep and it's struggled somewhat, but there's a small healthy shoot on it. So having this one that I kind of screwed up on is a good example because it gives you an idea of what could happen if you cut it a little bit too deep. And if this survives fine and if it thrives and it's a healthy vine, then we know that we can cut it a little bit deep as long as it's got some kind of connection to the parent plant. Although. This is definitely not thriving and continuing to grow like those other two cuttings, uh, layered cuttings that I did. There it is, it's not even July, and uh, I've got new vines established using this layered cuttings method. And you know, if they continue to grow throughout the season, they should have a good healthy root system by the end of the season. And then by next season, they'll just be ready to shoot up and uh, I can fill in some of these gaps in this vineyard. You can also do this layering method with just a single vine in like a nursery bed. And so if you have an established vine that's healthy and vigorous and putting out tons of canes, all you have to do is take each one of those canes and bury it with a few inches of soil, leaving just the end shoot uh, sticking out of the ground. And so this is a one year, these are one year canes that you're gonna be burying. You're always starting new cuttings from one year canes. So if you can just imagine like a healthy, vigorous vine growing and one year canes growing off of that sort of radiating and you're gonna bury each one of those uh, with a few inches of soil, and all along that cane, at each node, roots will start coming out and probably a shoot will come out as well. And so you're just gonna let it grow for that season. And then the following season, in the spring, you can either dig up that whole cane with the roots and everything and cut in between the nodes. And each one of those nodes can be a new vine, especially if it's got a shoot on it still. Um, or you can leave it in for another season that second season, what you can do is you can leave everything in the ground, leave all those sections in the ground, but cut in between the nodes. And so you're not shocking the plant by transplanting each of those nodes. You're leaving them in the ground, but you're separating them from each other. Each one of those node sections will then be a new vine. And so you could get like dozens of cuttings this way off of just one healthy, vigorous vine with a lot of one-year shoots. 
so share and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you liked the video and you want to see more like it and if you want to support my channel further and help me improve these videos become a patron and your name can be added to this list of other patrons i really appreciate your support and uh, also check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. I post more regular content on there in addition to videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.